Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Wednesday, November 4th, 2020 and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Thursday, November 5th. Futures currently are a bit higher here on uh, Wednesday evening. Uh, Qualcomm reported revenues and earnings per share well ahead, well ahead of estimates. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a bit. But uh, we do have futures just slightly higher, a little bit better on the NASDAQ than on the S&P and on the Dow. Um, and that was the case uh, throughout the day on Wednesday as well. And we'll get into all of that in just a minute. Uh, our agenda for today, I'm going to get into that daily market recap. Uh, talking technically, I'm going to pull up one of our sentiment indicators that we follow pretty closely, the equity only put call ratio. Then uh, jump into scooter movers. I'll show you a scan, an easy scan you can run uh, to take a look at some stocks that have moved. Uh, usually we think about scooter movers moving from lower numbers to higher numbers, but I'm gonna show you a scan where you can actually look for scooters that have pulled back. Then we'll get into blog highlights. Uh, I wanna go into a recent article that John Hopkins, my partner wrote in uh, Chart Watchers and um, show you a little follow-up from that article. Then uh, we'll get into the earnings spotlight and we'll wrap up the show with the three you must see. But uh, before we get into any of that, let me take you over to earningsbeats.com. I just want to point out for those of you who might be new to Earnings Beats, uh, maybe this is your first time listening to the show. Uh, if you do like what we talk about, go to earningsbeats.com and sign up for our free newsletter. Uh, simply type in your name, email address, hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll make sure we get everything sent out to you. There's no credit card required. Uh, the uh, um, uh, subscription, you can uh, unsubscribe at any time. And it is sent out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning before the stock market opens. Uh, most of the topics deal with earnings, relative strength, um, and I think uh, just things that will help you in your trading. Maybe just add a tool to your trading arsenal, anything you might... Uh, uh, pick up. I think it would be uh, worth worthwhile to check out the uh, EB Digest also to catch these shows. And um, look, you know, I'd have to say if there's one thing maybe that we really concentrate on fundamentally, it's earnings. Technically, it's relative strength, and we try to combine that. If you take a look at our portfolio performance, we actually had a very strong day on Wednesday with the market bouncing back. We have a lot of growth stocks. Growth stocks did very well on Wednesday. But you can see our performance since inception, also this quarter, and our quarters are not calendar quarters. Our calendar, our quarters run, um, our last quarter, or this quarter, uh, runs from August 19th to November 19th. So it'll end in just a couple of weeks. And then we'll start a new quarter on uh, November 19th that'll run through February 19th. But anyhow, the uh, S&P 500, the benchmark, you can see the... Uh, returns here since inception of each of our portfolios and also this quarter. And you can see how we stack up. I think our numbers are pretty impressive. And if you'd like to check it out, see what stocks that we have in these portfolios, you can do so by simply signing up for a 30-day trial. It's $7, but we'll refund you the $7 within a week. So literally, it's a no-cost 30-day trial. We'd love to have you. Taking a look at the action on Wednesday, it was a really strong day in the market, especially on the NASDAQ. Um, the Dow Jones finished up 367 points, the S&P 500 up 74, the NASDAQ up 430, the uh, mid caps up uh, just one point, and small caps down nine points. So certainly a bifurcated market, but uh, the NASDAQ was playing some catch up. Mid caps, small caps on uh, Tuesday had actually, both of them come fairly close to breaking out above recent highs. And so I think we we're just seeing a little bit of pausing there near price resistance while the other indices played some catch up. But the NASDAQ was really nice to see this big move getting back up above both the 20 and the 50 day moving average. Uh, I don't know at this point whether this is going to be the start of another uptrend, but it certainly could be. Uh, we could just be sideways consolidating. When we do that, you can see a lot of these moves above and below moving averages. Moving averages are great. Um, uh, uh, support during a trending market to the upside. But when you're not trending, when you're simply going sideways, like we've been doing for the past eight, nine weeks, uh, that's where you know we tend to uh, fail 
to hold its support or resistance on these moving averages. So we did get back above. Let's see if we hold now and can break out to a new high. That would uh, likely start another big rally in equities. We'll see whether or not that's the case. All right, as far as the sectors go, healthcare was the big winner. Uh, we did break out closing at 109.66, had an intraday move well up over 110, as you can see, but we did pull back later in the day, still a very nice day up 4.4% healthcare. Uh, communication services up a little more than 4% as well, but it was not uh, 11 sectors going higher, I can tell you that. There was a lot of uh, disparity in terms of sector performance, materials, lost 1.7%. As I pointed out just a little bit ago, you can see mid cap, small caps did not do well. So it wasn't everything going higher, but there were some uh, pretty good areas. So healthcare leading the advance, look at the uh, healthcare providers group. This was the top performing industry group, up 6.91%, easily clearing the highs that we've seen over the past several months. So a beautiful day for the healthcare providers index. Renewable energy, which had been very strong of late, took it on the chin. And there's a lot of uh, speculation that uh, the Democrats might have difficulty getting their new Green Deal through with uh, the Republicans holding on to the Senate. And as a result, some of these renewable energy stocks uh, took a little bit of a hit. 10-year Treasury yield. Um, you can see pretty rough day, down uh, 11 basis points to 0.76%. Uh, uh, just a little under 0.77%. But um, I think, again, that you've got uh, a lot of folks maybe nervous with what's going on with the election, not, not naming a winner. And as a result, uh, some folks climbed back into Treasury. So that's probably the most likely explanation. I mean, there may be some others. Uh, I know that uh, the um, ADP employment report came in lower than expected. So you had uh, a little weakness there in terms of uh, the economy. So that could have played a role in it as well. But that was a pretty big drop. And I'd really like to see the 10-year Treasury yield hold 0.75 um, and then start to move higher. We'll see whether or not that happens. Get our first clue on Thursday. We do have a Fed meeting uh, taking place right now, started today, Wednesday. And it will culminate in the policy decision that we made on two o'clock at two o'clock on Thursday. Um, also on Thursday, we're going to have the initial jobless claims out. Of course, we get those every week. Estimate for this week, 745,000. Last week was 751,000. So we're looking for a slightly better number this week. Q3 productivity, the estimate was for 5%. Q2 was 10.1%. So we're looking for it to be cut in half. Uh, but still pretty strong productivity number at 5%. And as I mentioned, the FOMC announcement coming out at two o'clock on Thursday afternoon. Moving into uh, talking technically. Um, sentiment indicators, uh, I really follow them pretty closely. The two that I follow the most closely are the equity only put call ratio, which you see on your screen here, and the volatility index. Um, as far as the equity only put call ratio goes, uh, when we get a lot of fear, um, this, this ratio tends to rise. This is a five day moving average up top. Um, and if we go back long term, I would say probably when you start getting up to about 0 0.75, 0 0.80, that's when you've really got fear picking up. Um, and I'm going to stretch this out. We can go back five years instead of just the one. And you can see on a relative basis where we are right now is not really that big a deal. Um, and we'll talk about these relative highs around 0 0.6 in just a second. But here, if you go back, you know, 0.75 to 0.80 is where you start looking at a lot of fear in the market. And as a result, usually we start marking bottoms when you start seeing, uh, you know, 0 0.75, 0 0.80. Look at uh, August of 2019, got up to 0 0.8, there was the bottom. The uh, trade war in, the, in December of 2018, the trade war, we had the, the uh, five-day moving average of the equity only put call ratio went above 0 0.9, and that perfectly coincided with the bottom. In, uh, let's see, February of 2018, we got up to 0 0.75. There's the bottom. So you can kind of see that when everyone starts uh, 
playing more and more and more puts, trading more puts um, because they think the market can't go anywhere but down. That's typically when the market reverses and turns back to the upside. So keep that in mind. Now, let's go back and just look at this last year because when you get into a secular bull market rally, you're not really going to be seeing the, in my opinion, you're not going to be seeing those really high equity only put call readings. Over the course of the last five or six months, you can see that when we've had the five day average move up to about 0 0.6, I'm going to annotate this. And I want you to take a look at where, you know, what was happening at that time and what the market did subsequent to that. So we'll do this vertical line. And let's do right here. So there's the first one. And uh, didn't quite hit the bottom, but it, you can see that fear that was building came pretty close to that bottom. And then we rallied. Next time we went up to the 0 0.6 level, we made a nice little rally and then we moved lower. The next little peak here coincided with this bottom. And then right here on this peak, you can see basically came in at this bottom. So normally what you see after you peak on the equity only put call ratio is a rally. So you get a lot of, um, it's a contrarian indicator. So when, when uh, the um, sentiment indicator is going in one direction, you expect the stock market to go in the other. So when we top on the equity only put call ratio, generally we're bottoming in the stock market. And that's you know, worthwhile to know. Now, if we break out above this you know, 0 0.6 level, then maybe the fear picks up and perhaps we even take out the lows that we saw in September and October. I don't, th I don't think we're going to do that. I think we're going to go higher, but it's something to at least be aware of. All right, let's move on. I want to show you, I'm going to move on to scooter movers and just show you a scan that you can run. Um, this is a very simple scan, just type equal, equal stock daily, a uh, simple moving average of uh, volume 50 day is greater than 300,000. And then I, I put on here scooter scores for two different time periods. So 46 days ago, and the reason I came up with 46 days ago, that's it's 22 days per month, 22 trading days per month. So 44 would be two months, which would take us back to about September 4th. Well, we topped right around September 2nd, I believe. So I just did 46 days. So back at the high or roughly close to the high in September, I wanted the stocks that had scooter scores greater than 95 because those were leaders taking us to that all time high in September. Now what I want over this consolidation are stocks that now have scooters below 75. So if I run this scan, it should tell me which stocks were leading back in September but have dropped now. The scooters have dropped below 75. And I ran this scan. I want to show you the results here. Um, now I'm just going to concentrate on the New York Stock Exchange stocks that came up. Um, I've got it sorted here in Scooter. So remember, I was looking for anything that currently had Scooter below 75. That's why you're not going to see anything above 75. But when you look at these, Shopify, software stock, Solar Edge, renewable energy, Spotify, internet, Vapotherm, medical equipment, another uh, medical equipment company, a biomed, and another one down here, Genmark, software, Coupa, and then gold mining. So for those of you that like gold stocks, uh, here's a stock that did have a uh, scooter above 95 a little over two months ago. Now it's 69. So maybe these are presenting some opportunities for us. The thing I find interesting is that all these industry groups are pretty strong industry groups. And uh, so you're getting stocks that were leaders two months ago, and they're part of industry groups that are leading industry groups. So these, this isn't a bad list to, to uh, think about taking a look at. And if we wanted to expand the re results here, we could always go back and change this to maybe 85. So it would give us the ones that have dropped below 85 instead of 75. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just take a look at a couple of these because Shopify continues to be one of my favorite stocks in the market. Uh, we did hold on to this recent low here in September. And I'm going to annotate and just show you how that low went back perfectly to that prior high. Look at this, this high right here back in May. We broke out. Notice we never went back to test this level 
until we touched it right here in the middle of September, down around 850. Now, I don't believe we're going to go below 850. I think we'll probably rally off of this. But in the meantime, in the short term, intermediate term even, you can see the sideways consolidation that's taking place in Shopify. I think we're probably going to be fine here, but I do think that we're uh, likely to maybe push back toward the highs as we get closer to January, maybe even breaking out before then. But I, I look for Shopify to have a strong pre-earnings run to the upside. All right, uh, let's see what else did we have here. Um, I'm gonna, I haven't really looked at Vapotherm, so I wanted to pull this one up and see what this is a small company. Now, this one I have a little bit more problem with because it lost its 50-day moving average and did so with very, very heavy volume. This looks like a game-changing kind of a candlestick. When you go from 52 and a half down to 30 in one day with volume, that's the biggest on the chart, and most of it is selling throughout the day, with that red filled candle. Um, I, I, this one's got some work to do to prove to me that it's ready to go. So if I look at this and Shopify, to me, Shopify is a much, much better candidate. And if we look at this on a relative basis, um, you can see the relative strength, which was great back in August, completely fell apart. And we're not really moving back to the upside. We're just kind of going sideways along for the ride. Um, that's not that's not showing leadership at this point. So I personally would pass on Vapotherm. Now, on a relative basis, if we take a look at Shopify, probably going to also anytime you can you sideways consolidate, you're generally going to lose a little bit of relative strength. And I think we see that here a bit with Shopify. But when we look longer term from left to right across this chart, I'm seeing strength. I'm seeing uh, momentum. And so, yes, in the short term, we have some issues and some consolidation taking place. But I, I do believe, ultimately, we're going to get this move back up and break out above the 1150 area. All right, uh, let's keep moving on. Um, how about blog highlights? So I think it was last week. Um, let me see if I can pull this up for you. In Chart Watchers, uh, John, my partner, John Hopkins, wrote an article and he talked about Snap and Pinterest, two stocks that reported probably among, they're, they're definitely among the best earnings reports and the best earnings reactions that we have seen so far in this earnings season. Snap, uh, you can see the huge move up here from 28, went up to 44. And then you come down here to Pinterest. Stock was trading right before earnings at 49, and it shot up to almost 70 the next day before pulling back. So I would say that you've got some pretty strong action taking place in these two stocks. Now, the reason he mentioned this, and I had uh, told him that if uh, he wanted to mention these two stocks and uh, wanted to talk about another potential internet stock that was ready to perhaps deliver a big report, um, he could mention it in this newsletter or in the, yeah, in the chart watchers newsletter. And, uh, what he did was offered up anybody who signed up for our free earnings beats digest that I would report this stock, this uh, upcoming internet stock that was going to be reporting its earnings. And I did that on that Monday edition. So earlier this week on Monday, I, let's see if I can bring that up. Here it is. So I sent out this, and this is just, this is kind of what you see when you get this um, newsletter. So on Monday, I wrote, is another blowout internet earnings report on the horizon this week? So I talked about Pinterest, talked about Snap, and then showed a chart of Upwork, UPWK. Now, UPWK had broken out above the August high had been pulling back. And actually, I thought this was a pretty good entry point as we got close to the 18 level. But earnings are coming up. You always have to be careful. You never know. Twitter is in the internet space, and it came out with earnings and lost 20%. So anytime you're holding a stock into earnings, you've got to be willing to take on more risk. Well, Upwork came out with its earnings tonight after the bell. 
And they came in with a loss of two cents. The market was expecting a loss of eight cents. So they beat by six cents. The stock after this move, first of all, it was at 1845 when this went out on Monday. So let's go back over here and let's take a look at where we were. So we were at 1845. We closed, that, that was back here. Two days later, we closed at 2022, almost $2 higher, about 10% higher, about a buck 80. Um, stock's up 20 and a half percent after hours tonight on their earnings report. And it comes down really to doing your homework, to finding companies that Wall Street feel are undervalued, like Snap, like Pinterest in the internet space, and then finding other companies that will come through and report the same type of um, blowout numbers. And when you look at Upwork, you can see the accumulation distribution was moving higher, hit a new high at the beginning of October, which was only a month ago. The uh, stock itself, obviously, in an absolute uptrend. Internet stocks have been performing really well, about to make another breakout. Upwork relative to the internets just two weeks ago, three weeks ago, set a new 52-week high. Upwork's been crushing the S&P 500, and internet stocks just broke out again to another 52-week high relative to the S&P. This, in a nutshell, is what we look for. Find a hot area of the market, look for leaders. And, you know, if you're going to take a risk holding into earnings, in my opinion, I would rather do it with leading stocks in leading industry groups. It doesn't always pay. Tonight it paid. So Upwork, again, up more than 20% with that uh, earnings report. But I thought that this, uh, you know, these blogs that we write and the one that John wrote last week was very timely. And uh, anyone signing up for our Earnings Beats Digest newsletter um, was able to at least consider Upwork heading into its earnings today. And again, if you go to earningsbeats.com, you can sign up for our Earnings Beats Digest newsletter and it's free. So no credit card required. All right, uh, let's keep moving on. I wanna move into earnings. So there were a number of companies reporting after the bell and tomorrow, uh, I believe over 600 companies report. So on Thursday, 600 companies report. Um, and that is the heaviest day of the quarter. Um, we have nine of our portfolio stocks reporting tomorrow. So it's gonna be a very interesting day for earnings beats and our portfolios. We did get good news after the bell tonight. Our only portfolio stock that reported after the bell, Qualcomm. Qualcomm, look at the AD line moving up. Look at its price action moving up. Look at the relative strength versus the telecom equipment group. Now, normally, I wouldn't be interested in a stock in an industry group that was as weak as telecom equipment. However, when you've got a stock that is literally just on fire relative to the group, look, it can still significantly outperform the S&P, even though it's in a group that is underperforming the S&P. Now, I do think probably makes sense to be a little bit more careful with stocks like this, because if you've got a stock and it's in, an, in a group that's not leading, and then all of a sudden the, the stock itself falls out of favor, it can quickly deteriorate. So you want to make sure, well, if that's your style, you want to make sure you keep your stops in play. Um, Qualcomm, by the way, is uh, trading or was trading at about 145 or 146 dollars after hours up almost 13 percent so a very strong after hours session for qualcomm should be a pretty good start um, on thursday for the stock all right let's see a couple of others we mentioned upwork um, another company that had a pretty nice reaction after hours was expedia expedia and by the way qualcomm their earnings a buck 45 Market was expecting a buck 19. All right, Expedia, market was expecting a loss of almost a dollar, 92 cents. And instead, it came up with a loss of only 22 cents. So the stock after hours was up almost 6% and looks to be breaking out above these prior highs. I think that's bullish. Um, if we do open tomorrow on Expedia above 
102.94, and it certainly looked like we were going to do that, then I think you're going to see the stock going higher. Now, we might open up because if everyone's buying in the, in the morning, you got market makers on the other side of the trade shorting. So it's possible we gap up and pull back. But if we get back to gap support, and especially the 20-day moving average, I think that could be a very interesting level for entry on a pullback after a gap up. Now, it might gap up and just keep going. But I don't like to chase, especially a stock that's been underperforming for a while. If I'm going to take a shot, I want to wait, let it pull back. So that's what I'd look for on Expedia. Um, let's see, another one. Well, one stock that was struggling after hours was Zynga, Z-N-G-A. They missed on their earnings report. And we'll take a look at the chart and we'll wrap up with the three you must see. Zynga came in with a loss of three cents. The market was expecting a profit of nine cents. Zynga had just broken out above the early October high. When we look at it on a relative basis, it actually had topped back about five months ago. Um, but it, and it's been in this downtrend. But after breaking out on Wednesday with heavier volume, yeah, probably a lot of traders were thinking maybe we're going to get that big move to the upside. Well, Zynga missed and they were trading down almost 5% after hours. So I believe they were down back down around 940, 945. And we'll have to see whether or not we can hold that gap support from uh, Monday's close. If we can't, then I'd be looking at the two moving averages. This double bottom down here around 890 would be very important. You don't want to lose that level, especially with the relative strength deteriorating the last five months. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up with the three you must see. And I think to do this, what I will do is just go in to the dashboard here and we will grab, um, I'm gonna take a look at the S&P 500, the three most active today. So let's just see what we got. So we got Apple, GE and Bank of America. So let's take a look at these real quick and see what we have. Apple bouncing back to about its 20 day moving average. I just see consolidation. I see a major top, uh, pretty key bottom now put in place at about 105. And I just think we're trading in that range for now. Short term, we wanna get through about 126 and we still got a lot of room before we have hit that level. Next up, GE. GE definitely strengthening and I like the way it's trading above its 20 day. PPO is strong and look at the volume coming in. So all of this is good. I think it's got a pretty good chance to go up and hit this 850 level. I'd be looking for a pullback at that point. Maybe on a pullback, watch that 20 day moving average. Lastly, Bank of America uh, down, of course the banks, financials down with the 10 year treasury yield uh, taking a big hit. As I mentioned earlier in the show, the FOMC um, announcement comes out tomorrow at two, two o'clock. That can have significant impacts on interest sensitive stocks like banks. So you wanna keep that in mind. Uh, I would watch, there's a triple bottom down here around 23, a gap support down at about 2240. I think that's a major area of support to watch on Bank of America. All right, that's it for this uh, episode of Trading Places Live for Thursday. Um, glad you all could tune in and uh, everybody have a great rest of your week and your weekend. And I will see you back over at Earnings Beats for the next Trading Places Live on Monday. Take care, everybody. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.